we have a problem, and as you can see, we're building the corkscrew. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Inside My Paint Booth with Robbie Layton. I'm your host. Today, you guys get to watch me paint. You wanna get this all blow tack and static? All right, so I got the red cap all sealed up. I don't wanna go all the way to the edges because I'm gonna be blending this. I'm gonna go spray a little bit more of this gray on this other bed. This other bed's gonna be white and it's actually for a Ford. I'm spraying two different colors. So this is what we call a G1 color sealer. G1 is a gray scale. This gray over here on this red truck, that's a G6. So that means you go from white to dark gray. So a G1's white, a G9 is super dark gray. So you can see that it's a little bit lighter. But what I did is I sprayed a little bit of the gray on this white bed side. And the reason for that is it's the exact same sealer. It's mixed up the same, just got a little bit of pigment difference. So now I'm gonna let you guys watch me put down my first real coat of base coat on the white, and my first real coat of base coat on the red. You can see a little bit of reds on it. Um, I just found really good luck with doing it this way. So this is a waterborne base coat. This is PPG and bio base. It's not a chemical cure. You don't have solvents that evaporate. You have water that comes out of it. So you have to do what's called dehydration. Dehydrate the base. So you take a blower and you take air and you move air across the panel and the water comes out. It's pretty cool. Without further ado, we're gonna base this. All right, so we got the white all down. Now, fun little fact. I don't actually leave the paint booth until all of my base coat is done. Once I'm done with the red, I'm gonna show you guys my blowers. We're gonna get this all dehydrated. All right, so I've got all the red base coat down now. now I'm gonna show you guys. Whoa. All right, so I've got all the base coat done on the red. I've got all the white done. I'm gonna let this sit for like five, 10 minutes. All the water's out of it, but I wanna just give it that little extra time before I put the clear on it. So I'm gonna go mix up my clear, get my guns clean, come back in and show you guys what it looks like with some gloss sauce. All right, it is time to get that gloss sauce put on. All right, so I got my second coat of clear. This stuff looks awesome, but it's super late. I'm gonna go home and go spend the rest of the night with my son on his birthday, so it is tomorrow. All right, so it is the next day, and we're gonna get back to work on getting my press brakes put together. So I'm gonna get working on that. Hillbilly and Colton are gonna help get the bandsaw together, and then we're gonna work on the tubing roller. So we got a bunch of tools we're gonna build today. We're gonna show you guys how to build them. Got it? Good. So what I got here is the Swag or swag, swag off-road press brake. So this goes in my Harbor Freight press. We've got a backstop. We've got some side ears. These weld on here. This allows it to slide in there but not fall out. I think it does some sort of centering too. I'm not really sure, but we do have some instructions. This has to get pressed in there. We've got to make sure that it's perfectly straight up and down. Then we'll put these on. Then we'll put our die on and then we'll weld our die to these and that is what goes up and down got a bunch of stuff this is our fixed die press brake just one and then we have our finger brake which is right here so this bolts together holds these little fingers so that you can do different kinds of bends it's pretty nice so anyway um i'm gonna work on these like i said we got Colton and Hillbilly that are gonna work on this bandsaw. This, you guys are gonna like this. This is gonna be an actual like tabletop bandsaw when it's done. So we're utilizing the Harbor Freight Bauer bandsaw. I've got a foot pedal control. Look at that. You're gonna love it, cause I'm gonna love it. And I just know it. <laughs> okay, I'm using the new awesome insider ratchet, Milwaukee ratchet to get these spring bolts out. Cause we're starting with replacing the 20 ton hydraulic jack with a air over hydraulic jack. Whoa. These weigh a lot more. These weigh, this one arbor plate probably weighs just as much as both of those. Look, oh, uh, not all arbor plates are created equal. See if they weigh the same. Literally, this one weighs more. Well, look at the size difference. <laughs> 
This is the guy your wife says not to worry about. Huh? <laughs> Just eating. The reason we replace these arbor plates, well, for one, I buy stuff off the internet that I don't necessarily need, but I saw those and I knew, I've heard that these break. I mean, we'll keep them around just for encasing. I'm using my workbench. You guys should be proud because normally I'd be on the ground and I'd be just fine with it. We're going to take the Harbor Freight tubing roller. We're going to extend the bottoms out, put the rollers out further, put a hydraulic jack on the top of it, put a power roller on it. Ooh. I want to try to get the milk gel off. So I've taken the mill scale off of both of these edges. <clears throat> grind up my angles so that when I go to weld this, it's clean, clean. I'm gonna hurry and clean up the other one just like it. Um, I do know I've got a weld in here, so I'm gonna clean those edges up. I just wanna do some prep so that when I go to weld it, it just makes it better. All right, and just like that, got these all ground as much as I want. Um, this is just gonna help ensure that everything that we weld is going to be clean. Okay, so I got the spot where I want to drill marked and center punched. So now, center home. Now that I got the holes drilled, I'm just getting these Allen bolts tightened down and this project will be done. All right, look at that. Super awesome. So I'm gonna get this figured out and then I'll show you guys how to do it because I've got to learn first and then teach you. All right, I pressed one in. Ooh, exactly where we needed it. We went halfway through. Let me take a look at the bottom. That way we can weld that up. Now well, we've got to press this other side. I'm already seeing the benefits of this new air over hydraulic. Don't want to go too far, we just want to go halfway. Went a little bit too far. This is a really expensive socket. Press that back out a little, but we got that right where we need it now. We gotta get it all squared up and get our bars in here. So I've got the pins and the center right where I want them. That's exactly on 90. So I'm gonna hurry and just tack these. All right, so I've got that all tacked. Now we're gonna grab the springs and just test to make sure that it all works. We can, we can put some adjustment at the top, but I think this is gonna work. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to make sure that this plate in here is at a 45. That is at 45, so I'm gonna tack these plates. I think that's further than what we'll ever need yeah, that's to go. Further, but I'm gonna hurry and just put a couple beads on this just so that it holds it so when I take it out, I can weld it and it's not gonna move. Okay, so Robbie's over there welding up the press brake. Me and Colton is gonna be working on getting the bandsaw put together. The old bandsaw. No, it's a new bandsaw. All right, we've got it all tacked up. I'm gonna put my tabs on this outside and then we'll pull it out of the press, put it over on the bench and hopefully get the other one started. So these are stoppers. I'm gonna put these right here. What do these do? Keeps it so when you slide it in, it's in the crowd. Oh. Remove the factory foot guard on your Milwaukee Makati Harbor Freight or the Walt Brandt bandsaw. I think that's the foot guard. <laughs> you bolt that plate. Look at it! You like the trigger controls? Yes. Go bolt. I guess it's just one. Now we just gotta do throttle control. All right, so I've got this one all welded up. We're gonna let it cool before we do anything else with it. I did, I did make a screw up. So this is supposed to be bolted in there. So I'm gonna make sure to not screw this one up. Anyway, don't do as I do. And I even knew better. I ground it, but I just got ahead of myself and screwed up. This is the finger trigger. It comes with the heat shrink wrap. So that way it doesn't mar up your trigger. Now the trigger will be safe. Super, super, super burning hot. Good chink. All I've got to do now is put this somehow. I'm gonna have to center it. Okay, okay. Drilling the hole for the trigger runner. 
Nice. Be sure not to over tighten the nut. How just do, needs to be snug. How do you do that? I don't know. Maybe with those gorilla fingers of yours. Ah, there it is. Moment of truth. You can see the versatility of this awesome bandsaw. It's pretty dang straight for being a portable bandsaw. We definitely need to get some different blades. This one's just a little bit too fine toothed, but that's a good cut. So for what this is, this awesome little tool is gonna come in handy. Thank you, Harbor Freight, and we appreciate everybody telling us to go to this website so that we could find these cool tools, so we could waste our money on stuff that we don't actually need. Yeah, that's gonna make our uh, Sorry, that easier. we didn't realize that we needed. So I've got this collar welded on. This collar right here is what keeps everything centered. So there's only one thing left to do. I'm gonna grab a plate and I'm gonna see if we can bend it. I'm gonna try to bend this. Definitely further than we would normally bend it, but I just want to see, oh, it almost bent it in a U. It's a nice bend. It's a very nice bend. Let's see. All right, we're gonna have to go back to the drawing board here in a minute. I think that collar's off. It is. Let's see if we can spin it. All right, so that's not a terrible bend. We are gonna make an adjustment. I welded that collar on in the wrong spot. Oopsie, <laughs> whoops. Look at that, a really nice 90 degree bend. So that's over 90. Um, one thing I do want to see though, is if it'll bend 3 8 plate, which I don't know if it will or not. One way to find out. Ready. A little past 90, but look at that. We can freaking bend 3 8 You want to try half? All right, now we're just having fun. Okay. All right, I'm loving it already. Perfect. Look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. We are in business now, boys. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna put all of my finger dies together and then I'm going to bolt them together. This, I can take fingers out and I can bend just, I can use just that here or I can use just this here. So if you have something like this and you just wanna bend that, just imagine these are flat <laughs> and you can use this. And then it keeps your metal flat, but only bends where you want it to bend. Just cutting the welds so we can re recenter this. You gotta use Robbie's word. word. Recombobulate. Where we can re-put it where it needs to be. Recombobulate is Robbie's word, so we can't use it because it's Robbie's. Now I'll get these all cleaned up. This is our die. This is just the version of this. Before I go too far and screw up, I'm gonna put these bolts in. I'll go weld these in, and we'll get to pounding this together. So I'm gonna tack this in place, release it, make sure it's gonna go back into the thing with ease and not be off uh, center or anything. And if it does, then I can fully weld it. If it doesn't, then we have to cut the tack and move it again. Oh yeah, it slides right in. Okay, it's done. Let's check to make sure for the third time. It slides right in with ease, like we need it to. Done. Now, we're gonna start building the base platform of the tube roller. Oh, it's already pretty much built. Careful with the styrofoam. <laughs> Why, what's wrong, Steve? <laughs> you don't like the sound of it? It's, it's like a, somebody scratching their nails on a chalkboard to me. You wanna to touch it? No, I don't. Okay, so me and Colin's working on the tube roller. Make it to where we use a jack instead of this for pressure, use a jack and then it puts a Bauer pipe threader, I think is what it is. And that's what spins it. And then you use the jack to put pressure instead of this crank. In order to do that, we gotta tear it apart. Which is that one, and that one. Okay, so we pop this snap clip off, and then we're just gonna take this apart. And this all goes together with the bottle jack. While he's doing that, I'm gonna start adding the top hat extension pieces. Tighten it up. Oh, that's, that's how that works. Yeah. I see, said the little blind man. You was blind at one point in life. I still am blind. Don't let him fool you. I should be doing something else. Like the finger dice? I wanna do the fun stuff. Last one to grind. And this little sucker 
gets to go up in here somehow. Don't know how yet, but we'll figure it out. What are you doing? I'm gonna weld these bolts in that I forgot to do on the other one. Yeah, let me show you a little thingy, okay? You guys might wonder what Colton's doing. Chalkboard to Steve. Come here, Steve. No, no. no come, here. come here, Steve. Come here. Steve loves styrofoam. No. <laughs> what do you got there, Colton? It's the pipe spinner finger. Wow. All right, we're gonna get these stops put into place. Sides are done. We've got to press just like before. Got to press the rods in. And so these are spacers that get welded to right there. Because if you don't have those, then you'll have way too much slop side to side because it's measured just to that. And these play, uh, extender pieces are go, go on the outside of it. So you have to add an extra spacer just to make sure that it's not very sloppy. Okay, I'm gonna put this clamp on here just to help hold it together. So that way when we start welding, it doesn't try to separate the ears out further to where we won't be able to get the pins in and out. Now it's ready to weld. All right, we've got this sort of set. No, we don't. We're gonna get this all set. We'll grab the welder and we'll get it tacked in place. Here, yeah, there's a, a washer that I'm welding this ear that came with it on that you hook your spring into so help ha so it has springs when you're done and you release it, it'll go back up. Okay, I got the top sides welded. Now I gotta flip it and weld the bottoms. All right, we got them tacked. Now I need the springs. I'm gonna put the springs in. There we go. Before we do it on springs, I need to weld those rods. Now I'm gonna make sure that this will still go on. Slide up and down. I think it's super heavy. All right, it works. Boom! And it works. I forgot to grind the metal to make clean metal. So I have to tear it all back apart and grind it. All done. Where did the nut go? Getting this one all back aligned and tightened up. Ka chow. Ka chow. Ka chow. Ka chow. Ready to weld. So here we go. Camera guy is going to have to hold it up. Why I get it put on? Because it's difficult to do it by yourself. Got it. Expertly put on. The first test. And we're right at the bottom. So they... Now to make sure it goes up like it's supposed to. So we done good. Okay guys, I'm gonna try to mount this digital angle finder to the pipe bender. I don't think I'll get very far because it's very detailed instructions, but I'm gonna try. Right here is a angle, digital angle finder level. Not entirely sure how to use it, never had to use one, but gives us instruction, it gives us instructions on what we have to do, and Colton's gonna read it to you. Now back to Colton. You gotta turn it on. It is on, but like- 0.0, .0. <laughs> it's at the three o'clock position. 12, 15, which is three, Six, which is 30, nine, which is 45, 12. Okay, there. Remove the aluminum back plate, mark and cut locations. Do we need to take a better off first? Yes. This one, right? What are you doing with that? We're no, figuring out how to do it. No, that has nothing to do with that. I know, it has stuff to do with that. Yeah, I know, we're not doing we're it. We're reading instructions if we know no, how to do it. we don't read. <laughs> We, 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 we don't need do instructions. It. This is not part of today's video. Scratch all that. Oh. All right, guys, we're back. I'm here. We're gonna get some stuff welded and some things done. And that is off center, but that's probably the best it can do. So I'm gonna teach Colton how to weld, but he doesn't have a welding helmet. <laughs> I know, we're so we're he's gonna have to get a welding hood. And we're gonna teach him how to be on camera and be cool so that you guys don't skip ahead when he's talking. <laughs> if he was boring, we apologize. I'm learning. What? 
This is OSHA approved. Very OSHA approved. Did you? No, I will double check that. Did you double check it? <laughs> yeah, four and a half. From which direction? This direction. Are you sure? From which direction? From here, down, four and a half. Oh. Are you sure about that? You sure about that? All right, so I, I got my pin all welded crooked, just like we like it. So I think the heat distorted it quite a bit because it wasn't that bad. Well, good thing we have a 20 ton press. So if we need to press it, we can. Hillbilly had this ready. Now he's questioning himself. If you are using the Swag Machine Drive Hub, weld the hub on the axle, 4.5 inches. But why does it look different? That is not the Swag Machine Drive Hub. This is. So I have it right then. Yeah, are you four and a half inches down? Yes. Then you do have it right. What are you questioning yourself for? Because it looks totally different. The pictures weren't. Good right. job, buddy. <laughs> it looks totally different. Good job, buddy. That's because it is different. Okay, we are installing that my jigger. Well, what is this going to do? This is a tubing roller, my guy. My guy, I don't know what that means. Well, I don't know how to tell you so that it makes sense. You can make a wheel out of tube. This is a drive roller. So it's going to slide into this. I'm just going to make sure that it'll combobulate. Don't do this at home. Oh, I know what's wrong. You got no gas in it. We're going to go ahead and figure this out and then we'll show you guys what we decide to do. All right, so we have this sucker in. And let me just tell you exactly how I did it. I pushed it in as graciously and careful as I possibly could. Come on. It's gonna go in, and once it goes in, it stays in. That's your home. Don't you wanna go inside your home? Okay. Plug me in, plug him, plug him me in. We are getting so, so, so close. Literally, we have never done this before. Ever, ever, ever. Whoa, whoa. Need for work. Gotta hit, gotta hit the clutch. Should we see if we can, how long it takes to uh, build a complete circle? I don't think we can get a circle. Let's try. We're gonna go two pumps at a time because slow and steady wins the race. Now, if you're bending like some crazy stuff, you might want to go slower, but. Woo! The coolest part Two. about this is we built this. Point We're making point. an S. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it was almost a great idea. It's fine, it's still gonna work. Two pumps. It's we'll we'll just have a bent wheel. We we have a problem, and as you can see, Build we're building the corkscrew. <laughs> we're gonna figure out how to fix that, and I think what we're gonna do is our center roller is off a little, and our front and our back rollers are off a little. So we've gotta square this thing up somehow. This is our first bend, but this shows you exactly what this tool will do, and that's pretty dang sweet. We can literally make some pretty cool stuff with this. So. It's not beautiful. It's not pretty. Don't get the job done. But it's pretty cool. And it's pretty beautiful. Yeah, we gotta definitely figure this out. A little bit more precise. I think that's, like I said, that's gonna boil down to getting this up here centered out. Maybe some washers of some sorts. I don't really know. That back die is a little bit off. We got some things we gotta do. That's not for today. All I know is this machine is done. So we took a Harbor Freight tubing roller. We took a Swag Off Road tubing roller builder kit. Took a four ton Harbor Freight jack. And we took a Bauer Harbor Freight threader. And we made the coolest tubing corkscrew roller you could ever have. Well, now it's adjusted. You wanna go a little bit more? We got another tool to finish. But it's this one? To be straight. <laughs> yeah. It, wait, that's not straight? That looks really straight to me. <laughs> Somebody get him out of here. We don't like naysayers. Steve had to go up north to pick up a customer. Well, while he was up there, we got word that Robbie's new rims were done. Look at that. I thought these were supposed to be blue. They're like a metallic red. What'd you do? Stop to pick them up? Or are they just I, did. I didn't even know they were even got the lift yet. Nah. -uh. Yes. Are those not sweet? That is freaking. Oh, oh! I knew he was gonna do something stupid. 
Look at what Kevin did. Made the method black. Oh, that's so sick. So in case you guys didn't know, which I didn't know they were coming back today, but my buddy Kevin at Powder Extreme Coatings took my brand new method wheels that are going on my 2024 Denali and he powder coated them candy blue. Just like I've always wanted. Look at, look at it, look at it. Oh, Andy left this black, I knew. So I told Kevin, this is why I take everything to Kevin at Powder Extreme Coatings. I told him just to do the whole thing blue. Don't waste your time masking this off. And he did it. I'm glad he did because it looks better that way. Yeah, the inserts are black. The method is black. Looks a lot better than all one color. It looks so awesome. Thank you, Kevin. And if any of you guys need very, 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 very good powder coat work, hit up my buddy Kevin from Powder Coat Coatings because he does amazing, amazing work. Good job, Kevin. You really outdid yourself. All right, I'm going to tack the other side now. And I'm going to take this to burn it in town. Get it all weld, welding welded. Look at that, exactly 45 degrees, but check this out. This isn't a true, look at that, 45.7. So this angle iron isn't 100% equal, so that's fine. We're not building watches here, okay? We're fabricating with metal. So I've welded since I was like 15 years old and I've never been good at it. But I did watch a YouTube video, believe it or not, the other night on how to try to make your welds look better when you're MIGging. And so far, so good. So I'm, I'm pleased with the way this is turning out. So I've got this base all welded now. It's hotter than Satan's butthole. I mean, what, do you, what can I say? It's hotter than hot, but we're gonna let it cool down and then we're gonna test it. So I've just gotta hurry and weld. Sorry. In a timely manner, I'm gonna weld that plate. Then we'll show you guys how this finger break works. I've got the front side welded. We've got to get this plate and the fingers out of the way in order to weld the inside. So Hillbilly's going to hurry and, sorry, Hillbilly's going to get these bolts out right now. One finger and then pull the bolts. I got a little bit of slag from my weld. So Hillbilly's going to go and clean it up a little. There's one piece done. Now we just got a couple more to do. So rather than grinding this, we're just gonna bevel right here just slightly. Pretty nice. Look who showed up. We got the little birthday boy. And I'm two years old. Mommy. Dad. I think you should all wish little Linkster a happy birthday. This is my only little boy so far that loves cars and loves Hot Wheels. Brayden loves Oh yeah, Brayden does too, but he won't come around very often because he likes his friends. He's a little brat. I think little Adley has some jokes for us. Um, what do you call a sad strawberry? What? A blueberry. A blueberry. <laughs> All right, that's enough jokes. All right, I love you. Bye. All right, so we got little Adley filming our outro today. So, we've got all the metal working to, oh, oh, you gotta stay on us. <laughs> So, okay, good. So we got all of our new tools from Harbor Freight and from Swag Off-Road all built and ready to get put to use. But it's that time of year. So we're headed to the SEMA show in Las Vegas. So stay tuned for some awesome videos from down there. But as always, oh, get it straight. <laughs> as always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one. Thanks for watching.